All right, guys, welcome out to another Late Lost Harley Davidson podcast. So number six, man, number six, number six. Cool. I lost, I lost track. We're on a roll <laughs> here now. So I uh, got Keith here, and we also got our awesome guest today. We got Diego Cardenas with us today, who just kind of made a historic trip on Harley Davidson's Live Wire. They're all electric Harley Davidson. So we're gonna be getting into that into that in just a minute. But um, yeah, Diego, thanks for joining us today, man. Matt, it's a pleasure to be here, dude. You know, you know me, I always like hanging out here. And when you tell me to come up to the podcast, I'm like, dude, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so yeah. D- Diego was actually the first, uh, the owner of the first live wire we sold out of here. So kind of a historic yeah. uh, customer for us as well, you know, having bought the first live wire from us and, you know, probably in the top you know, 100 bought in the world, if not so less. So I'm, I'm first strike number 42. Yeah. 42. So officially, I'm number 42 in the world. And in Southern California, customer owned, I'm probably number one. You guys sold number one because I beat, there was a competitor down the road, but he kept yeah. it for himself. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, yeah, we're going to kind of start from the top here with Diego and talk a little bit about, you know, how did you get into Harley Davidson from the, the first place? Was was the Livewire your first bike? What other Harley Davidsons have you owned in the past? So, um, Biking in general, I'm originally from Colombia. I came here to this country at the age of nine. I'm 50 now, as I've half the world known because of this trip. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, back in Colombia, having a motorcycle was a, a, a um, more accessible vehicle to own. Uh, cars were a luxury back in the 80s and in the 70s when I was kind of learning how to drive, or well, 80s. Uh, so my first bikes were like 125cc bikes, 75cc Kawasaki's, Honda Suzuki's, you know, type of stuff. Mm-hmm. When it came to the States, that's when I started seeing big cylinder bikes, you know, big uh, CC bikes. And my first bike was not a Harley, it was a Honda Shadow 650 or Nighthawk 650, something like that. Um, my first Harley was in late 90s. It was a 95 Sportster Deluxe Black. It was really nice. Uh, I love that bike. It was like, that's when I fell in love with Harley Davidson, the lifestyle the prestige, you know, when I rode, rode that bike, everybody's like, whoa, and the sound of the pipes. And I was like, whoa, yeah, it's cool. Uh, but I kind of felt the need a little more oomph, you know. I was like, oh, I kind of <laughs> want something a little bit more. I yeah. was, you know, I guess my wife says that I always go every few years I have a middle-aged crisis. I think I'm on number seven right now. So, <laughs> so when I was looking for something new, and at the time the big thing was the American chopper thing, you know, the whole chopper scene, and the bikes looked yeah. wicked, fat tire in the mm-hmm. back and stuff. Um but then I got sidetracked with this Discovery Channel video made of the making of the B-Rod. And I'm not getting into this. I'm like, hmm. I remember that video. You remember that video? Yeah, it was yeah. pretty yeah. trivial. Yeah. So it was, it was trivial. And that video just totally did a brain, man, brain. Screwed my brain up. <laughs> yeah, I bought a VR because of that video too. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So th- thanks, thanks to Discovery, yeah. right? Our lady needs to do uh, more videos with, with Discovery Channel. I exactly. Guess, huh? That yeah. that thing just totally blew my mind because it had everything that I wanted. It, it was a prestigious bike, the name brand Harley Davidson. It had the performance specs that you were looking for. It was unique. It was that. It had it all. It had the cruisability. I call it, you know, everything in one. So first thing I do is like. Okay, sold my Sportster, which which was pretty awesome because I bought it for like fifty five hundred bucks and I sold it for fifty nine hundred bucks. And Those I are the days. It. Yeah. yeah, so <laughs> I made money on the sure. bike that I used, uh-huh. yeah. um, and uh, went out and started looking around for a bike. And obviously, there was a shortage of that bike in Southern California. You couldn't get it that easy. Yeah. So I ended up buying it from out of state. They dollied it over. I got the O2, the original V Rod. So the O2, the un- anodized aluminum. This, yeah, called? the silver one. The yeah. Silver one. Yeah, yeah I kept silver it. Silver bullet, man. Silver <laughs> bullet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, call her my, I call mine silver bullet. Yeah. And since then, it's been a love affair. So I've been riding that thing for what, 18 years now? Whatever it is. How many miles? Uh, uh, probably fifty six thousand. Okay, That's so I, good I, for a I, yeah, I don't, I don't, it, it, dude. I've never had an engine issue. I've never had a training issue. Only issues that that bike has had. Is self-inflicted issues that I've done to it. So <laughs> bumps, crashes, laying yeah. it down. So it's me who's broken it every single time. Uh, since then, it's been a love affair with the bike. Uh, so on my sixth or seventh middle age crisis, I'm going, okay, I need something new. I just need something new because the fifth one was the Tesla. So this was like sixth or seventh. My wife's like, I'm really looking for a bike. So I'm starting looking at new motorcycles. And I was this close from buying an FXDR. Okay. No, I, I was like, that. I got into that and like... I just 
I didn't feel it. You know, it has to come from within. You know, yeah. it's like, it has to be this love of first. It's like when you meet that girl and she's the love of your life. And when you call her, your knees are twitching and you're like, <laughs> Hell. I have to feel like that when I get, a, get I got to get a bike. Yeah. yeah. And it just didn't do it for me. As a matter of fact, I rode it for the first time at the dealer show in San Diego because I happen to be real good friends with Harley Davidson, a guy who runs all the dealerships in, in South America and Colombia, where I'm from, because okay. I've done some consulting for them on the IT side. And every time that they have an event, he'll go, oh, come on down, I'll have a V-Rod over here, and you do some work for me, and you and you ride ride the V-Rod in Colombia. I'm like, okay, I'll go down. Yeah. If I get to ride and work and get my get paid for riding, imagine that. That's a sweet that's, deal. <laughs> that's a sweet, yeah, deal. sweet deal. That's a sweet deal. So I go out there. Um, and he called me up because he was here at San Diego at the dealer show. He'd come on down. You're part of my crew. You'll go check out the next year's models and stuff. That's when the FXDR was announced. I got to mess around with it, but I just didn't feel it. Well, it's gas powered too, right? Yeah, I it's gas powered. Did you know you wanted an electric yeah, bike? Yeah, well, well no, no. Of? So I've already been, I'm, I'm an electric guy because I drive a Tesla, but I, I like performance. I was never sold on the Zero. I test drove the Zero. Just didn't do it for me. I just there's something on the zero that not that it's a bad bike. Don't get me wrong. They're the pioneers. They've been doing this for yeah. ten years. There's just just the, the flip. The switch didn't flip. You yeah, know? and something that says a side note about Diego when as we were going through the purchasing process and even after he bought his live wire, he would continue to be very educated on both zero and Energica and every EV motorcycle in the market. And you know he would say, well, this is what they do better, and this is what Harley does better, yeah. and you know, and so it was. It's great coming from a guy like you as a from a consumer standpoint that has, uh, I guess, no equity in, in, in any of this and just strictly, okay, what is the best bike for me? For, my, it, yeah, for what I want. For your you purposes. Know, for, for my purposes. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's other people that will live, eat, and die zeros because that's what they like. Mm -hmm. um, so when when the FXDR let me down, then Harley Davidson finally announced, because I've been following the Livewire as a project. But I thought it was going to be one of those things that you see nicely glass display is live wire. You get to test drive it here and there, but we will never make it. Yeah. And then they announced in 2019, I was walking through CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, which I, I'm a part of, and I see Hardy Davidson booth. I'm like, what the hell is this doing here? So I go in there, look around the corner, and I see a yellow live wire right there being test, you know, revved up. Y'all yeah. can do on it. I go, okay. They probably had they give that, the, the, yeah, jump start, right? Yeah, yeah, jump the start, jump start, yeah. yeah. And they give the whole spiel about the marketing, the specs, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I remember back then they were saying it was 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, which everybody's like, wow. And then it can ended up being 3.0 seconds, and really I've taken it to the track, and it's done 2.9 seconds in my case. Mm -hmm. So doing pre prepping it right. Um, so I all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, they're saying, okay, it's going to come out next year. I'm like, no way. You can take my money here. I'm like, here's what yeah. I'm Take my money. So... Uh, that next year was sometime in June, was which was originally the, more, no, it was going to be like September when they were going to start releasing it of 2019. Uh, in June, I remember here in Huntington Beach, they had this big event with like 25 live wires where you would go the whole weekend and ride them up. So I went to this event because I got tipped on it from one of the guys at yeah. Harley Davidson. Hey, we're going to have an event. You might want to go try out the bike. I go, yeah, because obviously they knew that I was going to, I was hot and bothered for the bike. <laughs> <laughs> I go down there. I pull up on my V-Ride. You know, I have the uh, um, Unbaffled. Uh, now I have Screaming Eagles, by the way. Yeah. I just got Screaming Eagles installed on it. Good. Um, go in the bike, and it happens to be the guy who's running the road show for that uh, Harley Davidson event is also a V-Rod guy. And something a lot of people don't know, a lot of us, us, us V-Rod guys were brothers. Yeah. <laughs> so if you run into a V-Rod guy, more than likely he will be 100% behind you. Probably me and Diego get along. Yeah. So <laughs> V-Rod. Brothers of the V-Rod. bond. Yeah. Yeah. So I pull up on the V-Rod. He goes, dude, I heard that bike from back there. And I looked. It was you. I go, yeah, it's me. He goes, what are you doing here? I go, oh, dude, I, I'm, I'm, this is what's hot and bothering me now. And I need to have as much ride time on this thing as I can. And he goes, all right, since you're V-Rod, depending on how many people are on this line, we'll see what we can do for you. And literally, a lot of people didn't show up on Friday nor Saturday. Sunday was a pack day. He would say, okay, here's the key. Have fun. You got 80% battery. Have fun. I go, how long? He goes, it's 10 minutes. Wings at me. I said, okay. <laughs> Take off <laughs> two hours later. Yeah. <laughs> two hours later. Yeah, yeah I would go because I, I knew how to charge it. So I would go to charging station, give it a 30 minute charge, and then come back out. Oh, so you charged it. Uh, so I, I would, yeah, out of my pocket. Yeah, I would charge it. <laughs> but they didn't because they, they had all, you know, they all had them all geofence too. So they had the ability to know where they were at. Okay. I mean, I drove one. I, it, this event was in Huntington Beach by the pier. I went as far as Huntington Beach, Harley Davidson, just. To okay. ride around there, they, they even I pulled out in and they're like, going, "What?" They were all blown away seeing a live <laughs> yeah. wire, you know, before any other live wire was in, in the floor. So yeah. I did that for them, and they got blown away. So that moment uh, sealed the deal. Now it's like, where is it at? You know, it's, you're teasing me, you're showing me, you're showing me the pudding. I'm you're not letting me taste it. You know what the, what's going on? Yeah. And I 
started looking around the different dealerships. They were saying, "Now we're going to be carrying it. We're going to be carrying." That's where they had all you guys on their string saying, "Okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming." But the truck would show up and open up the truck, and no live wires. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had heard that one gotten to uh, one of the local dealers, but the owner ended up keeping it for himself for demo rides. And then the other dealership that I was dealing with, they, they couldn't deliver it. It's, it's on its way. It shows on its truck. It's on its way, but nothing was delivered until one day I was just I was driving from work, driving by here, and I said, no, I'll just stop late. I'll see what the hell. And all of a sudden I see the black one out there that you guys have, and I'm like, sell me that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we really can't sell it to you, Diego. It's for somebody else. It's you know something that we have to store. I'm like, really? Yeah. But we got another one coming in in 15 days or so. I'm like, oh, God, they're going to pull my chain, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so eventually, you guys did deliver. As soon as that bike got off that crate, I got yeah. a call. And literally an hour later, I was here. And I have pictures of me hugging that thing, almost <laughs> giving a French kiss and stuff, putting my leg on top of it. And the rest is history. It's been a romance being made. Um, why why the live wire? Because I'm a brand loyal guy. I like the technology. I like the effort. I like, I've like. i seen the growth of what it's done. I know where it came from. I know that the powertrain on the live wire came from Mission Motorsports. Mission Motorsports was a hyper bike that was going to be built back 10 years ago, which had some insane specs in today's world. If they make that bike today, it'll rival any Energica, type in Energica. So if the heart of the live wire is that, and all the technology that they developed throughout the years is part of that, I go, the package is complete. Um, you just taught me something. I didn't know that about the bike. Yeah, so the yeah. Mission Motorsports bike. And Mission mm-hmm. just got, as a matter of fact, Mission Motorsports technology, all their IP and all that stuff, got acquired by Denim, uh, Denim, bi- Denim Bikes, which is the new hyper bike that's going to come out that has uh, shape, shape-shifting shape positions now. So you oh, can, wow. it, it automatically, hydraulically changes the position oh, of the I've bike seen that. as you ride it. D- Damon? Damon? Damon, 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 yeah, Damon, yeah, Damon, Damon, Damon. They're out of like Canada. Full sport bike, yeah, like more upright. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they they oh, have like a, oh, like le- a uh, yeah, it's like electronically yeah. controlled uh, ergonomics. Yep. So like they, the, wow. the pegs and the handlebars move electronically. So they just bought all the IP from Mission Motorsports. So all the powertrain stuff that Mission mm-hmm. worked on, that is the heart of the live wire, is now part of uh, is their their technology patent. Diego knows everything motorcycle e e bike e bike for sure. Yeah, yeah Diego yeah. teaches me stuff about you know the live wire all the time, and, and I I know quite a bit about the Harleys, but you know when it comes to live wire, I, I, yeah. Yeah. Diego schools me all day long. I've I've learned more trying to help fix things and. Get his bike, keep his well, bike I, on the road. I have, I have some untold secrets also. I have, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. I also have the first live wire that got dropped. Uh-huh. By yeah. my wife. Yeah, oopsie. Mm, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, which, <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it, but it, it, is, it is what it is. Which caused uh, us to be the first dealer to change, like, a lot of those parts, like the lower fork leg. Like, no one had done it. The, the manual Yeah, you actually need a special is, tool. You yeah, need we, didn't, kinds. we didn't know we needed all this stuff. And matter of fact, the fact I let the factory know that their manual to put it together is wrong because they, yeah, they have it out of order for the fork wheel. And yeah. they didn't even know. The guy I talked to at Tech Services was like, Man, I'm telling you, I've never even done that before. You because it's the first, the first deal. One we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're the guinea pig on so, a lot of stuff. So, Diego's the so, guinea pig on yeah, a lot of so, stuff. Yeah, so and I'm glad to do it because yeah. I mean, it, it, I get to beta test, debug this even more. I mean, I wish they could have gotten into me back a year ago, and I would have even given more feedback. So, so going to a story, I would have done an Energica, but I just not Harley. Yeah, yeah. And I proven that point because a few months ago. We got together a bunch of the top e-bikes in San Francisco. They said, hey, we're going to have a meet together, very rare bike. So we had the live wire, which is rare. We had a lightning strike, which was even rarer. We had a bunch of zeros and the latest Energicas. We all got there. We all lined them up. Boom. Guess where everybody gravitated to? Uh, live wire. Guaranteed. <laughs> why, why was that? Like, What do you attribute that to? Uh, Harley Davidson. Yeah. The so brand? <laughs> and, I mean, because the Energicas are great bikes. If you look at the Energica spec, the Egos yeah. and the Evas, they're 150 horsepower bikes, zero to 60 in less than three seconds, top speed 150 miles per hour. That's well over a live wire, but it's still not Harley. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I like, obviously I'm a, a, a huge brand loyal guy, Harley guy, <laughs> but but they're, they're, what, they're, there's more than just a bar and shield. You know, if, if it doesn't have uh, the 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 specs and the quality of craftsmanship, the fit and finish that we talk about all the time, then it doesn't matter what if you put the you, barn shield you, on it or not. you got to have you the meat and it. potatoes. You nailed it. You nailed it because when you – and that's the zero. When you told me the zero doesn't do it for me, the Energica doesn't do it. I mean, and I know a lot of Energica guys. I ride with them all the time. They love their Energicas, and don't get me wrong, they're good bikes. Yeah. But when you sit on a freaking Harley, it feels like 117 years of craftsmanship. Yeah. Yep. Just bring forward to today's technology. 
Because yeah. I think a, a criticism that that people who don't know better talk about Harley is like, oh, you're just buying the brand. No. Well, it's like, guys, no. You can, you can only do so much on on buying the brand. You yeah. know, if you don't have uh, the meat and potatoes to kind of back it up yep. and, and a, a substantial product to back it up, you're going to go by the wayside really, really quick. And that, so, is, that is so true. Yeah. That so. is so true. And, and, and not only that, but I mean, and, and I'll tell you about the story that I'm going to tell you about later about the, crew, the trip that I did, how the brand itself and the network that it's built, worldwide network, helped me. Yeah, I was going to say, access to dealers is a huge one. Dude, yeah. even if, in, if, I, yeah. I, I, if I had a major breakdown somewhere in the middle of California and going across the country, do you think I have a dealership 80 miles away? Yeah. No yeah so that so you benefit from the you network. See, so, kind of so, so that then that knocks down. The biggest thing is, is like, and most people who ride my bike, they fall in love with it. They go, oh, my God. First of all, they, they're blown away that I'm letting them sit down on a $30,000 bike. Yeah, going, you're yeah, pretty go, generous with yeah. just letting people ride I go, it. I go take it. I mean, I, on the parking lot, as I was taking off from San Ysidro. Some guy was out there smoking a cigarette early in the morning. He, was, he started talking to me in Spanish because he's a Cuban guy and American Cuban guy. And I go, yeah. He goes, dude, I got rid of my Katana and I had a great Suzuki. And, blah, blah, blah. and he's talking. You, you, you could tell he's right. I go, here, have a, have a ride. All right. I grabbed the cigarette. I started smoking. <laughs> All right. So he went out and came back. He goes, dude. This is insane. So people get blown away. And to me, it's like me. You know how I put my bike on that that rental service? Yeah. I put my bike on a rental service early on. They're like literally within a week after mm-hmm. I got it, I put it on a rental service. How many rentals going. have you gotten now? Oh, I, I, I stopped it because of COVID-19. Oh, but I got it on the rental service two months. And you can say I made a couple of grand on it. Yeah. I'll tell you, I personally have... Uh, the most miles I've ever lit, ridden on a live wire is on Diego's bike. <laughs> test <laughs> riding it, it from, from no from yeah from test riding it and diagnosing things and yeah I've ridden other ones too like here but like I have had put serious miles on his bike probably several hundred at least. <laughs> so you've helped That's out so yeah. on the ten thousand mile mark that I just hit so yeah. so so you know going back so it's it's the brand thing so when I let people borrow it they come back and they're blown away with how it performs how it feels how it handles everything about it the looks the styling. What sucks about them is they hate it's dry tag, and yeah. that's when my my Tesla hat goes on, you know, because I come from a Tesla family, um, and I go, dude, think about this as being the Model S, the top of the line, all bells and whistles. This is what they can do, and probably even they throttled it down right now because of regulations. And but this thing can do a lot more. Um, so down the line, you'll probably see a Model X. I mean, a Model S, and I mean a Model Three, Three. and a Model yeah. Y, which is going to be more affordable. And yeah. it's based off the same core technology, the same motor, the same battery, just in a different application. Right. So then you can get your twenty thousand, eighteen thousand, twenty five thousand dollar live wire. Then would you be interested? He goes all day long. There you go. So I yeah. think I, and I'm not a strategist, and I'm not the guy who puts this together. But I think that's the route that they may be taking. You know, yeah. if it makes well, sense. They, they, I mean, they've already admitted <clears throat> that to a certain degree. I mean, they've already said that. Hey, the live wire is our halo bike. Um, which is everything you just said, you know, throwing everything they've got at it, all the technology and everything. So, um, and they also have said that this is just a, uh, the first part of a huge portfolio of EV vehicles that they're going to be coming out with in the future, you know, you know uh, of many of which will be less expensive. Yeah. So, so to, 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 to answer your original question is my history in bikes. So yeah, I went from the V rod to the liveware because that was the first bike that flipped my switch. Okay. Other than that, nothing else flipped my switch. That was that was the only bike that I felt that I go, you know what? But I still have this emotional attachment with my V Rod, which I still own and I still ride. This morning I the live wire and go, you know what? I'm just gonna go to Costa Mason right now. <laughs> and took off on the V Rod with those new screaming eagle pipes and I was just blasting through that freeway like crazy. <laughs> 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 it's like God, I'm back now, okay, now I'm gonna get late loss. So let's get on the live wire. Let's go to late loss. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Good to so, have options. Yeah, so yeah, and my, and my Tesla doesn't see me anymore. My wife's the one who drives it now, so I, I yeah, you take it. That's fine. <laughs> Do you have any gas-powered vehicles at your house right now? I have a hybrid. Okay. A plug-in hybrid similar to yours. It's called a Ford C-Max Energy, and the reason why I have it is because uh, it's like that's like the workhorse. I throw stuff inside of it. This is the one I took to my trip to Canada yep. because it has a built-in inverter, so that was like my... I'll backup. tell you the, the backup power generation backup just plan. in case if I didn't have <laughs> generator. In case you got energy. stuck without a charging station. <laughs> Which luckily, knock on wood, I planned it pretty well, damn well. Every single stop was right on the spot where I planned it, including the uphill stops. Diego was a thinker, man. I don't know if you heard his plan, man, but he's, he'll tell us about it. But <laughs> yeah. that was his backup plan. His first plan was to tow the bike and let it regenerate uh, power. <laughs> and the engineers at Harley were like, no, no you can't do that. You're going to break it. <laughs> they asked me, 
were like, is he really planning on doing that? And I was like, um, he talked about it. And they're like, please don't let him do that. Because <laughs> I'm used to in Colombia, when yeah. you ran out of gas and you had no gas station nearby, you grab onto the next freaking bus that was going by and you just hold on to your 75cc <laughs> bike and you're like, <laughs> until eventually dragged you far enough to get to a gas station. Because uh-huh. I wasn't going to push that for two miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There's the theory behind getting creating your own region. Yeah. yeah. But when yeah. I told them the same thing, they, as a matter of fact, I texted a senior vice president yeah. of engineering. Oh, I'm planning to go, nope. Don't do it. Yeah. I said, okay. You heard from, you heard from the top, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it, made him, it made him nervous for sure. <laughs> I thought he was really going to try it. I was. I was going to do it. Believe me, believe me or not. Because I was trying to make myself as... So you remember this This trip of mine was a labor of love for myself. <clears throat> self-funded. So I put the money in for the bike. I put everything together. And I got no sponsorships. Because nobody thought this was going to be possible. Uh, this guy's going to fail miserably. It's not going to go anywhere. So let, let, let's frame this trip before you go any further. So, yeah, let's so, get into it. Yeah, let's, let's, that. let's talk about that. So, um, so Diego, you rode across the country from Mexico to Canada. What what made you want to do that? And, I mean, you were kind of already answering this question. But so, tell us about that. So, um, I'm tur- I turned 50 a, a few days ago. Uh, like, what are we? Two days of 7th or like Happy seven birthday, by the way. 30th. Yeah, so the 30th I yeah. turned. So, prior to that, I... You know, uh, a year ago, if we were sitting down a year ago thinking what I was going to do for my 50th, my wife says, well, what are we going to do? I said, you know what? Let's just go to Spain. There, uh, my my uh, my descendants are from Spanish heritage. So there's a region in northern Spain called Cardenas, Spain, which is the town founded by my ancestors. Yeah. And I have a coat of arms and the whole thing. So I was going to go out there, take my daughters. They go, hey, this is where we come from. We signed some big book in the city, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, hey, we have some tourism. I've never been to Spain, so we'll do that. Well, with COVID-19 now, all that went out the window. Sorry. Yeah. Hope for we've been beep. You're, you're no, okay. yeah. Censor me, beep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, that went out the window. So I said, okay. So I told my wife, well, we can't throw parties because obviously, if we are six people or more, then we get busted by the cops. You know, they're coming. Hey, no, no, no social gathering. So that's gone. But it's my fiftieth. I'm only going to be fifty-one, and I'm thank you. Uh, I'm only, you know, I'm thanking God that He let me stay in this planet long enough. I've already had friends who passed up of cancer younger than I have. So I'm on borrowed time. I want to do something memorable. I want to do something that. My kids, his kids, and grandkids can say, hey, grandpa did this because he was those funny looking weird things that, that were called electric bikes, which are normal now. <laughs> yeah, he everybody has one. now. Yeah, every, he, he was the first one who did this. Yeah. So I want to do something memorable. So the, the idea came by, remember I told you about that meetup we had in San Francisco with a bunch of bikes? Yeah. Well, I left the bike over there because they were going to do a product review on it. A good friend of mine who's really knowledgeable on electric bikes, he's a total hacker on bikes. Um. He says, let me do a review on your live wire. And you know me. Here, have the key. Yeah. Call me when you're done. So he took it. He did his review. And he goes, by the way, I got your hookup. I go, what's going on? The guys at Corbin want to make a seat for the live wire. And they want to make the first one for you. I said, if you leave it there, they'll nice. give, you, give you the first one. I said, okay, just give them the key. I'll be there. No. How, long, how much longer? He goes, give them three weeks and they'll be done. Well, in those three weeks, COVID hit. Mm. I'm like, oh, really? So the Co- Corbin factory closed. They were out. I knew that the bike was in safe holding because I told them to leave it, leave it plugged into the wall and don't yeah. worry about it. And always, I always looked at my HD, HD connect app and I can see where it was. I know where it was, and I knew if they, if it was if it was being joyrided or, or used. Mm-hmm. Um, month went by, a month and a half went by, two months went by. The factory still closed because t- San Francisco had tighter lockdown orders than we did down here in LA. So I finally called my friend. I go, dude, I'm sorry. Tell Mr. Corbin that as much as I'd like to have my bike with a custom seat, I want my bike back. Mm-hmm. So he says, yeah, come on down and pick it up. He's, you know, he'll go open the factory for you go get it. So I go, why don't you retrieve it? I'll go to your place, pick it up. We picked it up and I drove up with my wife, but this time I didn't trailer it. Up. I didn't take a trailer. I said, I told my wife, I'm going to give it a try. See if I can ride from San Francisco to LA. Just to see if it's feasible. So I planned it out. I found some routes. I didn't. I kind of used PlugShare, which is like the industry standard for us bike, uh, electric bike or car riders, who gets all the different networks together, and you can pinpoint them in any location, any the, in the map. For those, yeah, for the listeners, it's it's a network of all the charging stations. Yeah, all the are charging on an stations. App yeah, so think at. about Exxon, Ex, Texaco, everybody in an app that tells you how far they are from where you're at. Mm-hmm. So I planned it out and I got on it and I started writing. And on one of my stops, it was a charge point stop. It said Green Coast Green Highway. I'm like, hmm, what is this? So I started reading about it. It's a network that was created, a joint venture between California, uh, Oregon, and Washington, where they pretty much electrified the whole five freeway from south to north. And there's enough networking infrastructure from different vendors that will get you across. So I'm just scratching my head. I'm like, hmm. (laughs) 
And I go, okay. So I took that route back home instead of the route that originally, and I made it all the way home. You know, it took me a day or so because it, I got caught with some web, bad weather. And like I said, I was not meant to do any records, but I got home and that's where the seed got planted. <laughs> I started thinking. So the first thing that I do normally when I want to do something, I kind of put it out to the cosmos. I go, hey guys, I'm thinking about... You know, just to see if the energy is kind of kind of reciprocate and come back towards me saying, okay, do it. And I put a picture of me, the West Coast Green Highway, thinking about it. And I started thinking and thinking and thinking. And then I did a little map. I found some routing. Okay. So that's when I said, we're going to do it. And I told my wife one day, a month before, I go, okay, for my birthday, I know what I want to do. She goes, I go, I, go, I want to go to Canada on an electric bike. Are you, go down, are you down? She's a road trip girl, so she loves riding. I mean, not riding, but she likes road tripping a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, she says, yeah. I go, you're going to be on the chase vehicle with my daughter because obviously the oldest one didn't want to come because she's 23 now. She doesn't hang out with that anymore. <laughs> and um, she, uh, but she did support me in the trip, which I'll, show, I'll tell you how, guys how. Um, and we just started. So the plan was I got my Ford C Max Energy, had a tow hitch hook put on it because the car didn't come with tow. I can do maximum tow capacity is 3,500 pounds. I went to U-Haul, rented a $14 trailer, and I said, let's go. And went to San Isidro, looked at the hills of TJ right there. I said, okay, that's TJ. Did a broadcast. See you guys in Canada. And I started from that point on. Doom, 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 and I hit every single charging station. So the way I calculated it was the bike has a theoretical limit of 146 miles street with mm -hmm. region and 90 to 100 miles highway, mm -hmm. depending on how you drive it and all kinds of other forces of nature that you do not have control of. So what did I say? My bike only does 80 miles. That's pretty much my baseline. To be safe. Uh, yeah, to be safe. And I went to a plug share and I said, every 80 miles, tell me what's around here charging wise on the five freeway. And I would calculate. And then some of them then, that I calculated wrong, then I, have one, so I would have to then recalculate. So some of my stops were at 80. Some of my stops were at 75. Some of my stops were at 87. But I was like around there and I was able to hit every single one within seven to 10 miles of range still on the bike available. Mm. Because then that sort of plan B would kick in. Plan B would be if I got to that charging station and the last charger said, oh, it's broken, it's not working, you know, like screwed, right? Especially on non-Electrify America stations. Electrify America station is doing a real great job of building stations, but they're building five or six at a time. Seven, you know, you have this yeah. whole row of them. Charge point puts one, max maximum two. So if you're screwed on getting a charge point, you're, oh, my God, what am I going to do? So I would try to hit Electrify America first and if not, charge point you know, as my backup. Gotcha. But it, I, there's points, there was points in the, in the trip that I did not have that choice. So whatever I got, I got. And yeah. then as a third, I would then look at EVgo and anybody else who was available. So that's how I kind of did it. I spaced it out that way every 70, 80 miles to try to get to a charging station. I kept my cruising speed at no higher than 65, even though the freeway would be, say, 75, you know, outside. Really? You, but, you keep it at 65? So I kept it at 65. I and, and educate people. That's yeah. just because you can get more range, more range at, at, that speed. at that speed. Yeah, so I can. And then, you know, as some of the tricks that I started learning, and this I all learned on the road, is I, depending on the terrain I was at, I would then change my riding mode on the bike on, on fly. So if I'm going up a hill, mm -hmm. I would put some sort of mode where I had very little region and some power. So it can, I could at least maintain the 65 with the least amount of energy. Mm, interesting. And then when I was up on the press, boom, boom, throw it into eco mode where the region was really bad and it would then help me charge, more. charge up more. So yeah. I would start doing these modes mm -hmm. as I'm driving the bike so I can try to squeeze a little bit more out mm -hmm. of it so I would not get to that charge station at, you know, one mile, which is... I didn't you want. I mean, I wasn't too worried about it because I had a trailer. I had my Ford C Max Energy with the built-in inverter, and I even bought a secondary inverter to plug into the twelve volt battery just in <laughs> case. So I, I was prepared. thinking about every single scenario of me going down on the bike, running out of juice. But what really happened during the trip had nothing to do with me running out of juice or the bike failing. It was me losing the key. <laughs> <laughs> he lost the key. He lost yeah. the key fob. I lost yeah. the key. So so the story goes as this. So we're going past. Um, Sacramento, really hot desert area. Uh, the bike is running great, but I'm freaking out because the bike is running at a temperature. My The bike normally here in Southern California runs between 83 to 103. The highest I've seen it is 103 here in Southern Cal. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it run any hotter than that. And it's because it's a day that we're pu pushing at 95 degrees, and I just finished charging it, so the batteries are running warm. And also, I'm running through, through the desert. I'm, I, and one of the widgets that I always keep on is the temperature of the battery. I always keep my eye on that thing. Yeah. It's crazy. I didn't, know, I didn't know LiveWire had that. Yeah, so yeah. you have a widget that gives you the temperature of the battery and yep. gives you estimated range based on how you're riding. And I'm looking at this, and it's 117 degree battery pack. I'm like, mm. 
So right away, I'm on my cardo unit going, call tech support. I already, I already have a fast uh, a speed dial for tech support at tech services. Call tech support. <laughs> and I go, guys, dude, I'm running at 117 miles, 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Should I worry? He goes, is it showing you any errors? I go, no. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay. I'm not, I'm like, so I'm running, I'm riding at 117 degree temper, uh, temperature on the battery pack, and it's probably 105 degrees outside. Yeah, so a small, like, there's a small amount of coolant that it's it's very, I can't remember the ounces, but it's not much that circulates around the motor and stuff like that. But the majority of the coolings from the fins on the battery pack itself, it, it cools air cooling, air air cooling, cooling air around. Cooling, the, yeah. That's so why it has they, the two scoops on the side that scoop exactly, the air into yeah. it. So, so don't yeah. ever take those two scoops out because then you mess yeah. around. It's similar yeah. to the vortex that the V-Rod yeah. air, 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 air dam had inside. That's right. Yeah, that same thing. Same t- basic philosophy. It was running hot and... I mean, I was running okay. My wife had bought me this nice looking. Um, yeah, that's nice. Mesh uh, nice jacket. Vest, mesh jacket, and I have a hydro vest underneath. Okay. So, so she kept me cool, but she forgot to cool herself down. Oh. She was more worried about me taking the heat, and she wasn't drinking water. She wasn't hydrating herself. She was being mom, you know, yeah, mom yeah. to me, mom to my daughter, and um, so I'm down at the uh, charging station. I'm charging, and all of a sudden, I hear boom, a thump, and some gravel. So I look around the car. I see my wife passed out on the floor. Oh. I'm like, what the hell? So I start pouring water on her. And she kind of came to it. And she's like, are you okay? No, I'm dizzy. I'm dizzy. I go, got her in the car, turned on the AC of the car, sat her down for like an hour and a half. We're talking. I go, okay. All I can say is heat stroke. Yeah. She just uh-huh. passed out. She wasn't hydrating. She had heat stroke. And that at that moment was the only moment that I was kind of concerned that I was more concerned about her safety. And I was willing to quit everything that I was doing as long as she was okay. Yeah. Right. So I asked her, are you okay to continue or should I stop here? I can stop and we can go to the doctor's or we can go back home. She goes, no, no, I'm just give me four more minutes. And luckily she hydrated, we kept her cool. She kept up, said, fine, okay. The car, the bike happened to be in front of the car where I left it. So I got on the bike, turned it on, re- you know, got on my way and went to the next charging station 80 miles away, 80, 87 miles, something like that. Got there, pulled up, put the kickstand down, plugged in the bike and started charging. 45 minutes later, I go to t- take that off, turn on the bike. The bike's giving me the bird. Uh-huh. <laughs> no fog. No fog. No, no fog. No, no fog. fog. Detected uh. it. So I tell my wife, she, she goes, oh. so I get that, em- you know, that feeling you get of emptiness when oh, you yeah. lose your keys. Yeah. Your stomach goes in your throat. Exactly. Yep. I'm like, oh, my God. But I said, no problem. We got pin start. Yeah. Yep. So I go to pin start. Well, first of all, I didn't remember what it was. So I had to call my daughter in California. Hey, can you go to the paperwork for uh, Yeah, go to Matt Laylaw. Yeah, in there, yeah, the, the paperwork. Yeah, there's a business card that has a code on it. Can you give me that code? Yeah, it's this, this, and that. I go, okay, tried it. The bike's not starting. It didn't work. I'm like, shit. So I call you guys. I go, hey, Dave, can you find out what my code is? Because I know you guys gave it to me and you might, you might have it. So he checked with you guys and yeah, that's the code. I, go, I even did didn't a video. Work. I go, mm, yep. it didn't work. Mm. Really? So I'm like, what do I do? So I call tech service. I go, guys, I don't have a fob. So he says, okay, I got a second fob being mailed to me. So I, I call my daughter. That's when my daughter, my oldest daughter, comes into the plane. I go, honey, go to FedEx tomorrow morning, take the key that you see in that folder where it says Matt Laidlaw, and put it in a FedEx envelope and send it to this lodge where I'm at. I'll just hang out one day, do some vacationing. So it was the most beautiful place you could ever vacation. It's called uh, Shasta Mountain. And you guys yep, know, Mount Shasta. Familiar, yeah. And in there, going up the mountain is where the Sacramento River is born. And there's a bunch of cascades and falls and waterfalls. You talk about the best nature in the world. I mean, Southern California is ugly next to Northern California. It's green forestry. It's hot as hell, but it's the river's cold. So you jump in that cold water at 100 degrees outside and Cold water inside. It's yep. the best thing. There's a cascade. It's called Moss Ray Fall. A bunch of moss and stuff like that, and the water just falling on top. Beautiful. There's another cascade where you walk behind it and take videos. I'll put some stuff up on my site. Yeah, It is really beautiful. Uh, so did a day of vacationing, some hiking. The key shows up the following day. There's even a picture of me with the envelope like this. Yay! <laughs> I open up that envelope, get on the bike, and Doesn't the work. bike gives me the bird again. Really? So I'm thinking it's my 12-volt battery. It's probably died because it's been flashing for the last 24 hours, every time I kind of cast, I had to trailer it back to the city to find the key because I went try to find the key in the parking lot where my wife passed out. It wasn't there. So that's where we decided on staying. So I called tech services again, tech support. And they go, yeah, no key, no fob, no pin. <laughs> what do I do? He goes, well, let me see what we can do. So they ended up, this is where the network of Harley-Davidson dealerships is worth the $30,000 that you're paying for. 
I could not have done this on Energic. I could have not done this on the Zero. They said, okay, go to the closest dealership which you have, which is in the city of Reading. So I now have to backtrack another 80-some miles on the trailer bike. Got there, and those guys who are not a Harley-Davidson dealership were authorized to trick in the bike. They plugged it into the diagnostic tools that you guys have. They, they weren't authorized live wire. Live wire, yeah, yeah, they're they're not, yeah they're, they, they're, but they are. They're, they're Harley. Dealership. Yeah, they're one hundred percent dealership. Okay. but okay. they're just not authorized because they don't have the tools nor the know-how. Right. To oh, well, the <laughs> advanced tools. Up. They have the basic tools, the, but they don't have the know-how to service the bike. Right. But, right. And, and for the benefit of our listeners, you have to <clears> go through a bunch of. Uh, you have to have certain equipment and things at the yeah. dealership. Yeah, you keep talking training. This better than I could. Well, it's, yeah, the, I'll give you some backstory because it's related, but just because you're trained doesn't mean you do everything right. So <laughs> <laughs> I I have to own both of his problems because th- they're they're incepted by something that happened here, which was uh, he had a, he had some faults on the bike. So we went through a process with Harley and we had to replace his BCM. So the BCM, when you replace it, you have to remarry the fobs and you have to change the code and all that kind of stuff. And when Diego comes, we, we start talking and he gets me excited about e-bikes and stuff and <laughs> we forget about stuff. I, and I believe I, I mentioned to him, Hey, don't forget to bring your other fob back so we can marry it. Cause you have to have it on premise to make it work. Well, we know I never followed up with him and I saw, I saw him since then and we never made it happen. Pair that with the fact that the co- reason the code didn't work was we're apparently we're I'm talking developing about- dyslexia <laughs> in my age and I transposed two of the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Which, Cause the code which, was off. Yeah. Cause they found, uh, they found my code. The, the, so the option that I had, if it was a, would have been any regular customer at the time, is you have to get a new BCM installed and reprogrammed. But yeah. there was no time, no resource, because the dealership was not trained to do that. So all they could do is they had to do whatever they needed to do to extract the current code and reprogram it to the current code that I need. Right. So we got the code, and the code was off by two minutes. Yeah, two, they're, they're I two mi- numbers are tra- transposed. Yeah, I mixed up a yeah. one, I mixed up a one and a nine. Oh <laughs> yeah. man, of all guys to do that. So so <laughs> so, so so so. But I mean, I'll tell you this: it's not a road trip without a, you know an obstacle or two to go across. So lesson learned: and, next yeah. time yeah. Diego's going on a road trip, I'm gonna have him come in. And we're gonna go over all the possible scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> if you lose a fob, both of them work. Code works. Okay, we're good. So so that got taken care of. I got back on the road and I had to redo the 180 miles that I had to backtrack. So I, what's cool about it is I wrote Mount Shasta twice. Well, really three times because on the way back I rode it again. I had it off. I had the bike off the trailer because that dude, that road is the most gorgeous road to ride. Yeah, Shasta going up Shasta Mountain. You see that big peak out there. You're just cruising. There's pictures of that. Me riding that bike. Oh my god. There's even one that I went to. This place called Pluto's Cave. Oh my god. That picture looks so fake because people don't that doesn't look like a real mountain it, it's a real scenery. it's too good to be real it's to be almost. it's such a nice picture and it was taking an iphone too postcard by the way. yeah postcard so scene. so yeah after that everything was clean sailing you know we got over that we hopped over the mountain we got into oregon uh weather got a little bit cooler up there you know their summer is 60s uh, our summer here is 90s their summer 60s and washington received me with a nasty ass thunderstorm and bad weather and Dang you know it. wind but I well, and on a live wire, something you haven't really talked much about. And the live wire, that's not a touring bike with a big fairing on it either. No. And the seat's not. Far I mean, I know you, one of the comments you said to me too is, "My butt's getting a little bit sore on this seat." Dude, too, no, right? no, I, 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 yeah, that. So, so I, I guess I, I, during the beginning, you're excited for the trip and you're kind of dealing with it. After the third or fourth day of riding, you know, ten plus hours, you're like. Mm, you, you yeah. kind of legs start cramping, <laughs> and then after that, it's like maybe I should have yeah, waited for Corbin mem- to finish. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> after that, your muscle memory kicks in, and you start kind of building that resistance to that pain. So I ended up building. You know, I thought I was gonna buy. You know, do I deal with pain the rest of the trip? But after a while, the pain went away. It also helped that I kind of got a little gel pad on there and kind of helped soothe the the position. Okay. But but in general, the discomfort went away, so That's it made good. it easier. Uh, yeah, the wind and the bike is not a touring bike, and I didn't put a uh, like uh, Ian McGregor or Charlie Borman. They had specially made clip on um, windshields, windshields yeah. so I took the I took it in. But I'm used to it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a V Rod rider. Yeah. Come on, yeah, come on. You ride V Rod distance. I ride, you're, you're dude. I remember when I first got my V Rod. The first week, I felt the soreness in my yeah. forearms because you're riding like this, dude. You're, you're like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. And my, I felt like Popeye, literally. <laughs> 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 so so yeah, so everything was smooth sailing and. Uh, I made it, I was up in uh, 100 miles away from the border on the 28th. And my wife says, why don't we just stop here, take a day off, you do what you need to do work-wise and stuff like that, and we'll hit, you know, the borderline on the 30th, which is the day of your birthday. 
which was a nice detail. I was I me. Mean, I just want to get done. You know, let's get yeah. there and let's get it done. Yeah. She was like, let's do something nice. So yeah. on one of the stops on my last charge stop at EA, she goes, go, go to Walmart and I need you to buy me something. I'm like, really? You want me to go to Walmart? Okay, I'll go. And she just took out the balloons, the happy birthday signs. and all that. She <laughs> decorated the whole charging station scenario as a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Took That's pictures cool. of it, and I, I think I saw the. I, I did saw see those that, pictures. Yeah, actually, she, yeah, and I'm like they're charging. I'm like happy birthday fiftieth, and <laughs> <laughs> everybody drive by honking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, a, I, I texted him on his birthday. Happy birthday, man! And he, I think he sent that picture and some pictures of a park that they stopped at back. Yeah. yeah. So first guy to ever so, decorated charging station. Exactly. There's birthday another, party. There's another first. <laughs> there's another first. So we did that uh, on the thirtieth. I hit the uh, what they call. Peace Arch Park, which is a park that is shared between the Canadian government and the U.S. government. Uh, the Canadian side was totally closed off. No Canadians can use the park. It's quarantined off because they don't want because of COVID-19. The American side did have people walking around, strolling their dogs and stuff like that. <laughs> mm, See, it goes to show you the seriousness of the situation. Uh, I talked to a couple of Border Patrol agents. I said, you know, can I get across? Um they said, right now, if you're not essential traffic, you cannot get across. You can say you're going to go to Alaska. They'll let you across. But if they catch you messing around in their city while you've got a permit to go to Alaska, they'll deport you. I'm like, oh, okay, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're real strict about their situation. <laughs> so just hung out there, had some cake, had some uh, apple cider, because my little one wanted to drink champagne, so we couldn't give her champagne, so we got some yeah. apple cider for her. And just had some cake there and, you know, said I did it. Yeah. And so how, many, uh, how many days did it take you total? Oh, officially, my counter says it took me 19 hours of writing time. That's what it says, but I'm not sure because sometimes I would forget. I have this tracker. I have this tracker uh, application that I use called Blue Lane that kept track of my whole journey. And it said 19 hours, but I, sometimes I would forget to turn it on when I was writing. Mm -hmm. It knows when it turns off because it sees you're not moving, so it'll yeah. say it stopped. But it doesn't know when I'm starting. Um, but it took me officially like seven days. And that's with the, with the stops the delays and, and, and the and delays and everything. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't out to break a record. I, was, oh. I remember I took off on the 22nd and I was 100 miles on the 28th and I literally crowned it on the 30th. Cool. So, you know, you, you know eight days, seven days, whatever yeah. you want to call oh, that's it. That's cool. So it was not, I wasn't out to do an iron butt. I wasn't right. out to make 1,000 miles in 24 hours. Maybe the next challenge. Who knows? <laughs> idea. There's an idea for you. There you go. There you go. Don't, 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 do you, don't tempt me, man, because I might. Um, but Because people are already asking you what's what's the next challenge you're going to do, right? Yeah, that's, kinda, that's, that's, next? that's the next one. Is There's a couple. Oh, no, he, he already put out in the universe uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the, coast to coast ride, I think. The, the, West put, coast to East coast, Yeah, right? I'm, I'm yeah. thinking about doing the L.A. to Miami yeah. route with Electrify America as their network because they're the ones who first have connected, even though there's other networks that could have been done without their network. But the reason why I'm choosing Electrify America, and that's one of the things that I did on my challenge right now, is I stuck only to ChargePoint and EA, Electrify America Network. One, because it saves money, because it's part of the uh, LiveWire deal. You get yep. that two years of recharging on uh, uh, ChargePoint and then 500 kilowatts of uh, charging with ea have you used your 500 kilowatts on i'm probably EA? damn close to finishing them so i'm gonna you got ten thousand miles right <laughs> on your <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah which we were talking you're probably one of if not the 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 most miles ridden on a live wire by a consumer by, by a consumer. consumer yeah by a consumer yeah. i'm probably the top one i know yeah. two other guys who have higher miles than me but they're movie stars okay <laughs> that's not me i'm which not is, movie star but you you and mcgregor and, and, and charlie borman that. yeah and they when did that the, come out by the way do we know supposedly it was supposed to it's scheduled to be out the end of this year but with COVID 19 i don't know if it's gone thrown that uh yeah i can certify that mileage thing because i was actually on the phone with the factory guys earlier and they're like hey what's what's the mileage reading i was like it's like eleven thousand nine hundred and something i think and uh they're like Oh really? Really? And I was like, "Yeah, really." <laughs> like, <laughs> he just rode. Okay. He just rode border to border. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So so hopefully that movie will come out because that's that's gonna be a pretty gnarly trip. Their trip is I I only did one tenth of what they did. I could just imagine because they went through all kinds of terrain. Now keep in mind their bikes were modified. They were modified right. for all off road. But well, it goes got to a whole show crew you, with exactly too, with and chargers exactly. And it, but but. What it goes to prove the same point that I was kind of proving. I wasn't out to prove that I was the fastest or the quickest. I was out to prove that electric technology has the same ump as gasoline technology when it comes to long range. It's yep. reliable. It's worthy. It's you can trust on it. You can bank your money on it that it will take you there without breaking down. Yeah. And that's huge because you know I can I can tell you for sure um, with the exception of price. You know people are always worried about range. You know what's the range. Well, am I going to get caught out on the road somewhere? 
but with the app and the network that's you know in it, place now, like you know, especially in it, California, you're, in not, the network, you're not going to get stuck. And the network is just growing every single day. Mm-hmm. It, it, see, I, I've been learning a lot of stories. You know, I I was lucky enough to visit this historical museum back in um, in Philadelphia a few years ago when I did my cross country on Tesla. I did a cross country on the Tesla, and I show up in Philadelphia where one of my family, uh, my wife's cousin lives, and I couldn't find the charging station, DC fast charger. So there was this museum of automotive history just a few miles down that had a destination charger, which is a low speed charger. So I went over there and plugged in at night and leave my car there and come back the following day it would have been charged. And I walk into this museum, and I happen to be walking into a museum of historical electrical vehicles. Out of all things, imagine them. The guy in the Tesla oh, pulls cool. up into this. So I get this whole story from the curator about electrical vehicles and you know how they were the mainstream back in the early 1900s until the gasoline engine came by and stipend that because mm. of interest, you know, money interest and other interest that came in. So it killed the technology. The electric motor was invented before the combustion engine. It was around before that. So it just happened to be that, you know, financial interest kind of took priority on one technology versus the other. It's like the VHS and the Betamax fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? right. Betamax was better technology, just the VHS had better marketing and more interest yeah. in it. Yeah. So the same thing happened then. So, you know, back then, um, one of the stories that I kind of now regurgitate to people, I go back then, um, the way when the, the, when the gasoline engine was taking off, used to get gasoline not from the counter shell gas station or the 76 station where did you get gas when there was no gas stations your local corner store or your local hardware store in the center of your town was the place where you would go in with your little bucket or your little canister and you get filled up and then you put in your car and that's how that was your network back then yeah. when they developed the gas station network that's when automotive technology in the automotive industry as we know it took off so now we have a good, reliable network of gas stations pretty much every other corner where we can have gas up all these cars. Same thing is happening now with electric. Electric vehicles, the only place you can charge, you have these charging stations here. But as these charging stations become more and more prevalent, and you're going to have them all over the place, the same thing is going to happen with electric vehicles. They're going to be able to go anywhere, anytime, any place. That's an interesting perspective. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's one of the stories yeah. that I heard from these guys. Uh, so I was like, yeah, no, that makes sense. You know, that makes sense. And the whole thing I get, I, I mean, being the live wire guy who pulls into the biker bars or to Cook's Corner or to the rock store on the electric bike and you look at all the other Harley guys and you have the, the guys who are younger are more adaptive and more receptive to what you, how oh, cool this is the lean live wire. Oh, check it out. Talk to me. You start talking. And then you have the older guys who are stopping in the back and, you know, heckling you and, oh, yeah, you know, ever see me on this? Music. You know, you know that's yeah. not a real Harley. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> not a real Harley. You know, my job is not to convince you that this is going to be the future. Because the future is not here. The future is not the future. The future is here now. Yeah. You're living right. it. Yeah. It's right. here. This is not the future. It's here now. Yeah. So talk about this. So the future is here now. It's, 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 it's right here. You're living it now. I go, my job here is to tell you, first of all, it's just another way of getting around. Just another technology to get us from point A to point B. Right now, yes, it's more expensive because it's the novel thing, you know, just like anything else. Something else comes out and you, they're going to charge you prime dollar. Well, let's but qualify that. You say more expensive, maybe just to buy the bike uh, initially, yeah. but actually the maintenance no, the, and, and, and the once cost you of I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, a spread, I did a spreadsheet, me, my personal, I did a, a fresh spreadsheet of, of how much it's cost me to own a live wire in the last, uh, I picked it. When, when did you guys win the, 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 the contest last year? Like November? November. Yeah, November. Or November. Third, third remember you guys in November. November when I, when the bike arrived, you were in November, remember? So oh, you, you, you picked up the bike when we were in Italy, Yeah, right? you were in Italy. Okay, yeah. So right. November and yeah. I bought it like early November. So. So since then, I probably out of pocket it because remember I've had the little side gig on the rental thing and and the gifts that I've gotten here and there. I did a math of what I've taken in, whether it's money or prices. So you factor that in, yeah, okay. to the cost of okay. me putting out on the bike. Yeah, the bikes cost me two thousand dollars in a year. Oh really? <laughs> And I have a thirty-four thousand uh, dollar bike. Yeah. So if you I mean look at it from that point of view, it's been cheaper all the way around. I don't have to worry about gas. Harley Davidson subsidizing the electricity for right now. Yeah. Electrify America is also subsidizing it. And most of the time, when I go to work <laughs> and the clients that I have, they have charging stations. If not, they have wall outlets. Yeah. Well, I, I think. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, no, great point. And, and you've done an exceptional job of leveraging kind of your following and being, you know, one of the first to do a lot of things, you know, own the bike, go across the country on the bike. And so you've been able to kind of leverage, you know, the things that you're talking about. But for just the average, average guy that buys the bike, 
you know, there's, you know, from a standpoint of like uh, tax incentives and things like that, I mean, there's still ways to kind of subsidize. Cut, yeah, cut, yeah. The, cut the, cost. the cost. I mean, yeah, you can get that $2,500, I think it's a credit that you get when you buy it with mm -hmm. the federal government. Yeah. So there's ways, I mean, it's still a pricey bike by all means. I mean, it's a bike that's only giving you quote unquote 146 miles and you could only get, you know, it's a $30,000. For $30,000, what can you get? You get a nice cruiser yeah, you get a you get a full dresser you know you get like go. a limited or like yeah, a really so, nice. so 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 yeah. they look at that from that point of view so when i get these hecklers my job is not to tell them that this is going to be the future my job is to tell them this is just another tool in the arsenal of transportation whether you like it or not that's up to you you know it's just another way and you know i go into the story about saying hey back 117 118 years ago the reigning king was the gas engine and they took over from something called the steam powered engine where everybody had to yeah. kind of put Colds and something, and then and it used to take off, right? And then these guys come over with these internal combustion engines, and the steam guys were like, "Oh, you'll never see it in this running though those noisy, dirty, smelly pieces of you know what." Yeah. yeah. Well, hundred years, hundred seventeen years later, this is what you have. So I think we're in, or once again, we're living another situation where we have these two cross points now, where yeah. the geese, the gas engines guys are going, "Oh, you'll never see us really riding these pieces of crap." Well, let's see what history brings. Yeah, 50 we'll see years what happens now. in fifty years. Exactly. Yeah. Sure, yeah. So yeah. that's how that's another. So I can't, when I start giving them those stories. Stories, and I was, obviously now I'm shaving, but when I'm you know have my full white beard going on, they'll respect me a little bit more, so they don't think <laughs> I'm a young punk trying to sell them on something. So, so they, they stand back, and then what was a heckle now becomes more curiosity, yeah, and they'll right. start asking me about the specs Getting about the bike. Yep. You know, and if they weren't drunk and they didn't look half you know half half as bad as they smell, I would say here here take the keys and I take them. But <laughs> no, those guys are go, you know, it's really fun to ride, so I leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, in general, it's 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 been a great uh, experience owning this bike and being a pioneer and taking it to the levels that I've been taking it to. I'm just enjoying it, and I'm not doing that to I'm not out to to conquer the world or make money off it. I'm just passionate about the technology. Yeah, yeah, no, you're a big time enthusiast. Um, and let's talk a little bit about you know kind of some of the the stuff that's that's happened subsequently with you doing this cross country trip. You know, and if you guys don't already follow Diego, I would recommend following him on his. He's got. The, the fastest growing, probably one of the biggest uh, EV but, or live wire groups on Facebook right now. Yeah, so yeah, so we have facebook.com forward slash HD live wire, which is my personal blog. So it's my escapades, everything that I do with the bike and what I don't do, how I dress her Tips, up. Tips, tricks. Yeah, If you're exactly. thinking about getting a live wire, you got to follow this guy's yeah. Facebook and page. And then behind that, there's the Facebook live wire group, which is the community that I'm building at the same time. So now you got a bunch of enthusiasts like me who are propeller heads, whether they're electric vehicle owners or not, or looking into it, out there asking questions, helping each other out. I mean, you already see bikes that are being painted neon green. You got a guy who's already found saddlebags for his live wire. I mean, there are all kinds of weird stuff that nobody sees. These guys are doing it. I mean, Check it out. It's, it's pretty awesome how these guys, and I don't answer the questions anymore. Somebody posts something, and you got, like, three responses already from three different guys from five different parts of the world, you know? They're just part of the community. Yeah, it's the community. So that's the effort that I'm doing there. I also have my personal Instagram account, which it's me an extension of the Facebook. I just put it there and kind of just pushes it down to Facebook. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, I, I launched my YouTube channel. I finally... Oh, nice. Broke. Sweet. I finally broke. <laughs> I got to do it because everybody's asking me, so you on YouTube? I'm like, no. Yeah. I've done some YouTube stuff. I I was lucky enough to install this carbon on the bike. And I don't know if you noticed, but obviously if you haven't noticed it. My bike is red. It, it has the same red that the Tesla Roadster is going to have, hopefully in the next couple, next year or so. So I called my bike, my build, I called it Livewire Carbon Red Edition. So, and there's even a whole emblem and logo designed for it and everything. I entered into a bike contest and I won too. Cool. <laughs> that's first right. live, oh, that's another first. First live wire that wins, wins a bike contest. Yeah, One yeah, of the local well. dealerships did a virtual bike contest during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Submit your picture and whoever gets the most likes, well, guess who got the most likes. <laughs> I love it. So I, I got that. So These are like I, the triple digits. Like people were like, uh, well, well over a hundred and something, I think. Right? Yeah, yes. every, every, read everybody else. Yeah, I, I love you, everybody. Dude, even, even, even my friend's grandmothers were voting. <laughs> <laughs> so, because that's the platform they're in, Facebook, right? They're not, yeah. they're not the older, they're all the older platform. Um, so, I started doing all kinds of stuff on the bike. So, um, as as time goes by, I'm, I'm being the first at a lot of stuff on the bike, which is pretty pretty damn cool, and it's. Just because I like, I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy the platform. I just, I, you know, every time I talk to Keith or I talk to a, any of the guys at corporate and tell me, you know, they're asking me, hey, how's the bike? Because I'm on the white glove treatment thing that they have. Which is another cool thing. I don't mean to interrupt you, but, you know, just with you and how many miles you put on the bike and, and how active you are in the community and stuff, 
you've, you've been able to kind of talk to the engineers, the guys that have built these things, which in my opinion is kind of a, a cool privilege to be a part of. Yeah, because I'm the one who's kind of buzzing, you know, doing pushing the bike to limits that they never had it be pushed before. I yeah. mean, yeah, you yeah. had a couple of actors come from 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 Argentina and doing the thing, but then, you know, they were doing a movie and they were they had their help, but, you know, once it's done, here's your bikes, have fun, you know, we're done. When you're a tech guy, you know, to begin with, so you kind of know the, the verbiage and, and kind of what's going on so you can better explain yeah, you know, the, yeah, it's not it's not, it's not your traditional bolts and and, and oil pan and, and gasoline. You know, it's like to me, a live wire and a Tesla and anything else all CV, it's it's a computer with wheels. Yeah. That's all it is. So to get hired to do work at Tesla, you're better off being an IT guy than being a mechanic. Because mm -hmm. the mechanical parts are less than the logical circuit parts that you need. Because most of the time, how do you fix a live wire nowadays? You plug in a computer to it and Look at the logs, right? Yeah. How do you fix the test? Like a computer, look at the logs. If it's a mechanical, you just some bolts, boop, put it on, that's it. Yeah, like 90% of the work we've done doing stuff with Diego's bike has been calling these guys at the factory and plug it in digital tech and they remote in and they do a bunch of stuff and tell you what to do on the bike and then that's pretty much it. But just so you know, like how serious the motor company is, like pr today's a perfect example. I talked to Diego yesterday and said, hey, you want to come into a podcast? And he's like, yeah, could I get my bike serviced at the same time? Yeah, no problem. Bring it in. I didn't know this morning. He didn't know either that he went to the bike and something was up with the battery and he hadn't mentioned it to me yet, but he showed up and literally he was in the, in the lobby of the service department and I was in my office and I got a phone call. He had called, um, the white glove guy. I don't know his name, but Brian, Matt, no, Matt, Matt. No, Matt. Matt. cause I got yeah. Brian is like my senior guy. And then yeah. Brian is and Matt is the technical guy. Okay. Yeah. So he called, uh, Matt, and then Matt called Ashley, who's the guy on my end, and Ashley had me on the phone. He's like, hey, uh, what's up with Diego's live wire? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's here for a service. He's like, what about the battery? And I was like, I don't know nothing about the battery. Hey, Diego, what's going on your battery? <laughs> it, was like, it was like that the, quick. The, the information comes back the other way around. Yeah. Instead of coming from me to him, to, to the company, yeah. the company comes to him and says, hey, check this out. Which is, a, yeah, it's a privilege. But it all happened yeah, in a blink some of an eye. really nice all, treatment yeah, as, it, as a live wire. And, 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 and I mean, it happened don't in a blink of an eye, like in not five a, minutes. Not everybody's mm. going to get that. And uh, yes, yeah. A, yeah. a lot of the first 500 owners, because remember, I got the first strike series. So a lot of the owners also haven't, but not a lot of the owners are pushing the bike the way I'm pushing. It. Yeah, for sure. Sure. So they're for interested sure. in, in me, what I'm doing with the bike, because I'm out to kind of showcase the technology. I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm, I'm begging them to send me a new battery pack that is 20 kilowatt. You know, <laughs> if they can fit it in there, I'll take it. I'll beta test it for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and you're I'll a serious have... enthusiast and you're willing to give them the feedback so that yeah. you're not your the typical something. owner. You're not the typical, you know, passive owner that plugs it in and rides it every once in a while. No, you're I, a serious I, I, enthusiast. I mean, I'm already thinking, I mean, just I was telling you right now, you know how they tunnel into the bike and do their thing. I wonder if I can tunnel into the bike and <laughs> switch some <laughs> settings here and there, but I know that that's all well hidden in there and highly encrypted. So, yeah. But if it, I learned this from a thirteen-year-old hacker, if it's if it's man-made, it can be man-hacked. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to talk about For the warranty sure. implications of that, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> do that after do that after your fifth year. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, no. So it's it's been a great journey. I mean, uh, I just can't wait to see what the next gen. If this is what the first generation of bikes that Harley Davidson makes in the electric field is, I can't wait until the next generation is. Because, I mean, Zero's been around for 10 years, and their bikes, you know, they can, they're good, but they're not that good. Energica, they're a bunch of ex, you know, Ferrari guys and Lamborghini guys who got together and wanted to make nice electric bikes. They have some ex experience, and but it doesn't have the network, you know. Yeah. So that leaves Harley Davidson, and uh, obviously, as soon as Harley Davidson released theirs, you know, you heard Kawasaki, you even saw, did you see the prototype bike that they had at the, uh, at the show last I, year? I haven't seen the prototype. You know, I think I saw it online. They had a, a prototype. They had a prototype a ninja, electric ninja already. Okay. Yeah. I think I saw a picture of that so a lot online, of, Yeah, a I lot think. of the other manufacturers are taking known platforms and trying to electrify them. them. Yeah. And that's it's it's and going okay, I, but it's not I great. don't think it, yeah, because the live wire uh, was designed from the ground up to be an electric purpose bike. Purpose built, yeah. Yeah. If you, it's, you know, if you grab, it's like grabbing a Ford F-150. Yeah, it's a good concept to put an F-150 and make it electric, but it's not really a truck designed from the ground up. Right. If you put a, a difference. Yeah, if you put an F-150 next to a Rivian truck, I would take a Rivian any day mm -hmm. for the technology's sake because it was built to be electric from the ground up. Now, would I take a Ford? Yes, because of the network, if all their dealers are on board. Mm -hmm. That's where the network weighs in. Yeah. yeah. So it depends on what your priority is. Yeah. If you guys haven't already, check out uh, the video uh, I posted about the live wire. It's like my live wire review. Diego was uh, kind enough to uh, come with us that day down to downtown LA with Robert Patrick. And we 
went into the LA River Basin and we went up to uh, Griffith Park Observatory. So check that video guy if you haven't already. A um, couple other questions, Diego. So uh, electric vehicle compared to a gas powered vehicle, you know, what, what's kind of, what draws you one to another? Like, I, I guess, let me ask you this question, actually. Who, who would you recommend the live wire to? Like what type of a guy, if it, uh, maybe, you know, maybe there's, there's people out there listening, they're thinking about getting the live wire. What are some kind of criteria that you should have them ask themselves before they pull the trigger and buy a live wire? Okay, let's say the affordability issue is not an issue for you, which is you know, 30000 Okay, that's fine. That's not a problem. Why would it get a live wire? In my case, and I'll tell you the perfect example why. I mean, yes, it's a bike that fit my switch, but I commute daily from where I live to where I need to work. I, I'm, I'm an independent. I have an IT consultancy firm, so I have clients all over the city, but they're mostly in the west side of L.A. I live in Riverside County. If you count the miles, I do around... 48, 47 miles one way to get to work. I'm putt-putting around LA, and then I go back home, right? That's another 48. So on a good day, I'm doing 200 miles on my car, okay? That's on a Tesla, comfortable, doing carpool lane where I can, doing fast track to- tone lanes when I can. But that doesn't exempt me from being stuck in traffic. Yep. Traffic is traffic. I don't care what yeah. car you're in. So that drive became now, instead of an hour and 20 minutes, which what it used to be back in 2013, 2014, now I'm hitting an hour, 40 minutes, hour, 45, sometimes two hours on a Tesla because of traffic. Now, mind you, today's traffic is a lot different, you know, because of COVID. It's kind of died down a little bit. It's picking up again, but it died down for a while. I was so happy when COVID started because I was just cruising right through the 60s. It was so nice. All of us. Yeah. But now that's gone. So that kind of defeated the purpose because I live in the outskirts of the city. Um, so, uh, what's the next logical evolution for me? Electric bike. I could, I do the same thing on my V rod. Yes, but it's a gasoline bike and yeah, I like my V rod and stuff like that. But a V rod is not meant to be weaving through traffic and zigzagging around the live wire rides like no other bike. You know, it's just, yeah, so I can, I, there's, there's no words that I can explain to you to tell you the sensation of what it feels to ride a live wire. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, being that I can get on the bike it's fully charged overnight in my house because i don't have a level a dc fast charge i have a regular slow charge in the wall I plug it in it's fully charged i get to my office so my first office that i'm visiting i plug it into there i'm there two three hours the bike sh- goes up another 20 or 30 percent i put put around the city and then i may have enough juice to make it back home if i don't i'll find the dc fast charge station have my sandwich do some of my texting by the time i'm done with there i'm back out and all this is costing me nothing so tell me what bike gets you from in into the city for free? Yeah, I can't think of any. <laughs> well, <laughs> you have to pay gas somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so splitting, splitting lanes on that bike is is awesome. By yeah, the way, like yeah. I, I've split lanes on a lot of different Harleys, and that one just you know how that on and off you know speed the in, up the and slow torque. down. Yeah, the, the instant, instant not only speed up but also kind of slow down where you just mm-hmm. let off and the regenerative braking kicks in. It's it's an it, awesome. It gives bike you for it that. gives you it gives you a sense of boldness that you don't get with a gas powered because the torqueness gives you that yeah. gives you that. Mm-hmm. Let's take out that chest now. We can do this. Mm-hmm. You know, I can see I see gaps this way that on my V ride I would like. Yeah, no, nah, wait. But yeah, it does. And every, on this one, I go, yeah, yeah let's go. For it. <laughs> it does. It does Agreed. everything like it. It accentuates all the uh, positives that a motorcycle has over a car as far as from maneuver maneuverability acceleration and stopping standpoint like everyone always asks me like aren't you nervous non-motorcycle riders that, that i come in contact with family members and stuff well aren't you nervous about riding around cars it's like well no like we got to remember we have three distinct advantages over a car we can go fat we can accelerate faster we can maneuver better we can stop faster it's gotta be a situational awareness cars. at the end of the day yeah. so so yeah that's another good point that you bring up is that uh in the last seven or eight months that i've had the bike i've had more close calls than in the last 30 years of riding a motorcycle now, mind you, it's it's a live wire and it's a silent bike. You know, the only thing you hear is a wing when you're taking off, yeah. but you don't hear that on the freeway. It's just like you don't hear a Kawasaki Ninja pass by you at times. You know, their their mufflers are so good, you don't hear them. You just you're, whoa, what the hell is this? You know, mm-hmm. or you can kind of see their light just wishing by you. So the same philosophy applies there. So yes, you got to be more situationally aware when you're riding an electric bike. Just like you have to be more situationally aware when you're driving a Nissan Leaf. Or a car that is very quiet because mm-hmm. yep. people won't see you. Now, luckily, technology is also kind of finding a solution for that. Most modern day cars now are coming with those side impact bulbs on their light on their on their mirrors, so you can have that blind spot detection. Yeah, my so, wife has that. On her yeah, car. so yeah, so yeah. It, it's becoming a standard piece of equipment. So now, and I think that's also partly an answer to the industry kind of accommodating itself for these new silent vehicles that are coming. So if you're going to do this, you know. Oh, 
there's I can there's a bike there I didn't see it but it, the cars tell me that there is something there yeah. so you're kind of aware so that so there's a give and take yeah there's there's greater danger but there's also there's technology that's kind of being in there but at the end of the day you know you point one finger at them but there's three pointing at you so you're ultimately responsible so you you got to know when and where to do stuff you know yep. just got to have yep. those eyes open and see four or five cars ahead yeah. kind of forecast the road. Couldn't no. agree more. Yeah, drive defensively. That's one of the things that people always talk to me about that are kind of new to the motorcycle world is like, well, you know, my relatives keep telling me that they're dangerous and that, you know, people are crazy on the roads nowadays. And I just tell people, you know, you got to ride ride defensively and you have to think three cars ahead of you, like you just mentioned. And if you do those things and you ride within your ability level, you're going to be pretty good. And, and the risk isn't going to be know far greater than you know getting in the car and going on the freeway i, think, I mean honestly the the my experience of motorcycle riding in southern california is, is the opposite like when i'm riding down the freeway and lane splitting there's more people getting out of the way and giving me room than ever come in try to purposely come in on you i mean they yeah. do come in on you but it's some a lot of times it's a mistake an accident or you find they're look, looking at their phone and that's mm-hmm. another issue but there, yeah. most of, mm-hmm. like i would say 80 to 90 percent of the people when they realize you're there they they're like giving you extra space they'll go over on the skirt or they'll I agree. edge over in the lane like this yeah. is the exact opposite that of what people you know non-motorcycle riders see i think yeah. you know so so so, so yes yeah, so it, it brings a different level of, of expectation from the motorcycle rider danger is going to be there i'm yeah. also a brain cancer survivor I survived the brain tumor many years ago so oh, i'm a fir- i'm a firm believer that the day that god wants you he will take you so yeah. it's your day it's your day you got to kind of have a little bit of that attitude when you when you do a lot of i think extreme sports or action sports it's just like you know what there's there's so you know i do everything i can to be cautious and be safe but at the end of the day you're gonna go and God wants you to exactly. go. Exactly. Right? So, so with that being said, you know, yeah, go ahead and get that bike. You know, I, I hate to be, and that's one of the things about me in life is I hate to be that guy who's in that bed at 95 years old, laying down, going, I wish I could have gotten that electric motorcycle when I had the option. No, I right. did it. I experienced it. I yeah. did as much as I could with it, and I can say, you know, I can die in peace. Yeah. yeah. That's how I see my. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so going back to the question I asked her there, so you're thinking if, if you have the budget, if you have a commute that is kind of like inner, inner city type of urban riding yeah. where you got to get that, somewhere. That, that would be your bike. And if you live in a city that has the infrastructure, you know, yeah. uh, infrastructure is key, but it's not essential. Like I said, if you're a guy who has to travel 60 miles to work, you know, cutting through traffic or getting in the freeway and you can plug in at work, you find an outlet, plug it in. By the time you get out of your eight hour work shift, you're back up, you know, cause you're not going to get to work at zero miles. You're going to get to yeah. work with 30 or 40 miles left. Or by the time you get out of work, you're back to hundred miles, go back home, plug it in at home. There's your perfect scenario. You get there fast, you have fun, you enjoy the ride and you have cutting edge. Thank yeah. You. Much like a car yeah. too. Like yeah. the one bike that the one live wire that they let us borrow for a couple of days when you were demo or demo riding them. I, you asked me, hey, can you take this bike out? And they want to, we want to see what it does charging, you know, as low as you can get it to fully charge. And I rode around until it was like literally 1%. I rode into the parking lot on 1%. And when I hit the charger, it was 0%. Yeah, I turned it back on and tried to go and it wouldn't, it wouldn't go anymore. Go. So yeah. we ran it completely dead. Yeah. Yeah. And that's unlike other bikes, um, uh, Zeros and Energicas at 10% will cut down. They're going to extreme power saving mode at 10%. So mm. when you're out and you're 10%, you're like, oh, it's not going, I just need to go. No, the live wire will give you everything until that last that percent. That last percent. Yeah. percent, yeah. <laughs> and I also, I, I was one of the first one, I also did a video, like, I'm heading home, like, okay, let's see if I can get this. And literally, I was getting off the off-ramp, and the bike hit zero, and I'm like, I'm throttling, the bike's just not responding, I'm just coasting into the station. <laughs> <laughs> I go, here's what it is to have a live wire at zero miles per hour. That's Luckily, it. it was an EV go right there, so I plugged in, and, and I go. made it. But, um... It, yeah, so it's 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 a person who kind of it, it's what it's designed for. It's not a cruiser. What I did was, you know, don't try this at home. Professionals doing this, you know, type. Of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so take some planning. So, yeah, exactly. It takes a lot of planning and knowing it, it, the limitations of your EV. Don't don't just go out get a live wire. Okay, I'm going to go across the country if you've never even had an electric car in the past. So, um, it is designed for urban inner city. You know, going in and out. You know, beat traffic, have fun, lifestyle type thing. Uh, if you want to start doing more stuff, I say stay st- stay tuned. I know probably Harley Davidson has some nice wicked toys coming down the line. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so yeah, well, cool, Diego. It's, it's been awesome. I mean, it's such a privilege to have earned your business on the bike. You know, just having you as a customer, someone that's so passionate about the bike, and just kind of you know that that passion and enthusiasm kind of bleeding off on us because we've been. You know, I, I can speak for you know 
myself and I, and I know Keith too have been really excited about this bike and the build up, you yeah. know, coming up and towards you know the bike. And so, you know, having you as a customer who's also really passionate about it and posting so much of their experiences online, it's just been really cool to, to watch. It's and to infectious, follow. man. Like his yeah. energy about the bike is like he starts talking and gets so in, animated, and you're yeah. like, you're like in it, like yeah, man. <laughs> get you more enthusiastic. About <laughs> let, me go, let me go try that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't own them, so we got to live vicariously through you yeah. to a certain degree. But, um, yeah, another thing, too, you know, we've had a lot of re- articles written about you, you know, recently in your trip specifically uh, from some of the big uh, electric publications, which I'm going to put in the description of the video or in the description of the podcast. Uh, if you guys want to read about those articles and Diego's trip, um, yeah, be, yeah, be sure to check that out. It's real easy. Just go on Google and put in his name. Oh, no, no, not even my name. Don't, don't, re- you can forget about me. Type the word live wire and hit news on Google. Uh-huh. And you'll see my face flash. Yeah, I told him. I told him yesterday. Yeah, I told him yesterday. Like organically on my Google news feed, uh, the electric, 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 electric yeah. article came up. I was like, oh, it's Diego. I didn't search him or anything like that. And then he sent me a video yeah. of him searching his name. And when you put his name in, Livewire just comes up after it. So That's I'm synonymous with Livewire and then the nowadays. First, yeah, the first whole page is all articles about his his. Uh, his exploits yeah. on his on his live wire. Yeah, no, I'm seeing articles now being published in Italy, Sweden. Yeah. Um, it's 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 pretty nice. So you're world famous now. So I, <laughs> uh, uh, for what I, I like, I said at the end of the day, I just want to show people that it can be done. Yeah. Um, and you've done the technology's that. there. Uh, electric is not as bad as people seem, seem to think. It's 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 just another not way of getting around. As restrictive as people think. Yeah, think, exactly. Yeah. You can get away with some pretty gnarly stuff nowadays. Yeah. Uh, and people ask me, well, you don't get the pipes, you don't get the sound, you know. I go, I will trade any day of the week sound or torque. Yeah. yeah. You give me torque or give me sound, I'll take torque any day because to- torque will get me there. Sound just yeah. sounds nice. Well, and the, the, sound, <laughs> the sound's actually kind of cool, you know, with the bevel drear, uh, bevel uh, gear that's in the live wire. It kind of has like that jet turbine <laughs> engine. Yeah. I, I was actually just, we were filming and using the live wire as like a filming bike on uh-huh. a soft tail standard video I filmed a couple days ago. And that bike has a really cool, uh, unique sound. sound to it. Yeah, when you that, get moving, that suits the bike. Yeah. I feel like. And I, one thing I've noticed about that it's it's because so there's a there's a spec for the lash of those gears, right? Um, and each bike's a little different. Like Diego's bike's a little quieter than a, a bike that I've experienced before. But it's during the service you check these things, um, and you like I start I'm starting to take mental notes because the more we see them, it's like okay, well the ones that are tighter. Are a little louder. The ones that are a little looser or a little quieter um, type of kinda, scenario. So yeah, you can kind of um, tune that. So no two are alike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. It, it, like it, literally, if you ride a few of them, like I think we have three here right now, it, including Drago's four. If we rode all four of them, they would all. If you really pay attention to it, all of them, four of them, would have a distinctly like different sound to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. And you know, and, and you know, the, I think they're they're about to sell the fifth hundred. I, I would say the five hundredth bike will probably. Sell sometime in the next two to three months. Wasn't the 500th bike that one that they were doing? Well, yeah, that was officially, that was a COVID one. But then right now, I just got one of my latest posts from one of my followers. He says he just got his first strike plaque and he was 420, uh, 380 something, almost 400. Yeah, I think that was a 500th bike uh, manufactured. Built, built. okay. Not sold, yeah. 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 So now it's what I'm talking about. Customer owned, we're almost hitting that Mm -hmm. first strike mark, which means that. You know, I think they were forecasting like 500 to 1,000 bikes for the first year. So, okay. I, I mean, and they didn't, obviously, they didn't forecast for COVID to be in the middle of the picture. But yeah, if they hit I, the number with COVID in the middle, I would be surprised. Yeah. I'm yeah. calling it now. We're going to just put Livewire in Diego's name. It's Diego Livewire Cardenas. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Livewire. <laughs> He'll have his own, like, limited edition model. Yeah. Well, I remember I got the, I remember, I remember I got the red carbon yeah. edition. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or carbon badass. red edition. So. That's yeah. I'm proud of my little build. And people go, how did you get those CVO emblems on your bike? You're supposed to have a CVO VIN number. I go, dude, mm-hmm. it's called 3D printer at home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 those are unauthorized bar uh, shield yeah, CVO I, ha- I, I haven't heard anything from legal yet, so. <laughs> but I'm not I selling them will. either. I'm yeah. not selling them either, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. So, so, cool. so, yeah, so, yeah, you know, that. I've had a lot of fun. I, I've been doing stuff on this bike that I wouldn't do on a regular bike. Yeah, I've, I've modified my V-Rod because every time I crashed it, I didn't want to put it back together the way it was. So I would kind of change the 
know, the handlebars to drag bars and put a cowl on it. But this is the first bike I ever sat down and felt comfortable saying, you know what? Let's just buy some extra plastics. Let's get that have them wrapped. Let's do this. Let's put some. You saw the tape I have now yeah. on the rims because mm -hmm. I'm waiting for carbon fiber rims. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to ask Santa Claus if he gives me Santa <laughs> carbon we're, fiber. We're working rims. on it, man. Send, yeah. yeah, send a message. Just so, just so some carbon fiber rims. I mean, this is the first bike that I'm doing stuff that I normally don't do on a bike. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You're not, you're not so shy. Easy. You're not shy about doing stuff and, and customizing yeah, it. Today so. we put the uh, end game grips on for him. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah I so I got the end game grips on him, and uh, um, I'm just trying to. The bottom half of my bike is kind of bland right now, so I want to kind of change it. So that's where the rims are going to play, and the, I got that whole you know fifth hundred, five hundred bike, yeah. uh, that whole black motor thing. Yeah, they, I, that, I kind of like that's that. a that that's rad. actually like a cosmetic cover on the engine. You can take it off and or on the motor, you yeah. can actually take it off and have it. Oh, really? Oh, painted or powder dude, that looks so sexy having a black yeah. engine cover. That did look good on that bike, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that I'll was totally I'll different. I'll flash up a picture of the bike that we're talking about, by the way. Yeah, it's, geez, that looks sexy. So I'm thinking, yeah. about, hmm, maybe I should have my working engine or my motor co co powder coated or something like that. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. That'd be, that'd be bad. But, yeah. but yeah, no, so, but I mean, or maybe I'll get, I, 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 every single raffle that's out there for live wires, I sign up for, I buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get a second one and try to do something with it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, cool, Diego. Right. I think we got to get back to work right, here. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> hey, it's we can be here all day long. <laughs> for sure. We can yap it up all day. But it's been awesome having you here uh, yeah, once you. again. And uh, I'm going to link all of Diego's social media networks and following and everything down below his Facebook, his Instagram, uh, some articles you guys can read if you want to le learn about his trip a little bit more. And I'll be putting all that in the description below. And yeah, uh, we're all good. The, the link to your YouTube as well. Yeah, I'll, yeah it's, brand new, it's brand new. It's brand new. It's brand new. I just, okay. I, I, uh, next video is coming up tomorrow morning. I, I have this segment called uh, Ride the Live Wire In, you know, so and then between quotation marks. So I'm already thinking, Ride the Live Wire In. The first one is I'm doing it in Bellingham, Washington, which is the border town against, you know, Corona. and I'm, using, I'm doing all this on Insta360 cameras. So you get the whole oh, 360 yeah. degree Badass, view yeah, of the cool. roads that I'm in. And I'm thinking, Ride the Live Wire In India. On ride the live wire in Argentina, so I'm thinking about <laughs> jumping over to take, take having the bike flown somewhere and then ride out there and then ride the live wire because you get the whole perspective. Yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. I'm just, just kind of cool. dreaming stuff of, of, of what I'm doing, but yeah. it's been an honor knowing you guys, doing business with you guys, hanging out with you guys, filming with you guys because it's, it's, it's to me, and you know, you guys, I mean, you guys. Gave me my baby now that that got me one of my middle age crises. We enjoyed too. <laughs> I, I, oh, <laughs> did you get over your middle age crisis? Did you scratch that itch? Oh, oh yeah, one I, I, that one. Yeah, but you know, in a few years, my wife says I'll probably have another one, and I'll have to fly. <laughs> and it smells like a Tesla Roadster to me. But uh -oh. man, that, that's a different story because that's a two hundred. He's gonna put it out there in the universe and see what comes back. <laughs> right. yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Maybe Elon is listening to the podcast. Hey, Elon. I can use it. <laughs> I'll, I'll email him this uh, podcast because we're tight like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Again, Diego, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, spending your time and, um, yeah, jumping on the podcast here with us. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later, guys. See ya. Later.